Hey there. In this video, I'm going to show you an example of how to solve a combination circuit. Um, a combination circuit is one in which some resistors are connected in parallel and others are connected in series. Uh, your mission is to reduce the entire network of resistors into a single equivalent resistance and to solve for the voltage drop and the current through each individual resistor in the circuit. Um, as you learn how to solve these problems, it will be useful to draw a new circuit every time you complete one of the steps listed below. All right, so let's do it. And I'm going to pick a fun color here, sort of. All right, so we have a circuit here, um, which is obviously got a lot going on. And um, the approach is to simplify the circuit by, first of all, looking for anything that is clearly in series, okay? So we're looking for series paths. And that's always the first thing you check for. And so what we see right away is that you've got these two resistors, which are right next to each other. They are in series. Um, and nothing else is in series. So uh, don't think that that first 5 ohm resistor is in series because it isn't because there is a junction here. There's a splitting point. So you can't use that first 5 ohm, nor can you use the 17 ohm. All right, so I'm going to redraw the circuit and I'm not going to draw the battery each time. So here's my 5 ohm. Uh, I'm going to then simplify 5 plus 5 into 10. And then I still have my 17. Okay. All right. Uh, and I left out something, didn't I? I left out my 40. Okay. Don't want to leave that out. So step two is now we're going to go on the hunt for things that are in parallel. And I hope you can see that the 10 and the 40 are in parallel. So we're going to have to combine those up. I'm going to keep that 5 ohm out in front. See here, this is going to be the mystery resistor. So what I have to figure out is how much resistance do I have in that when I take my 10 ohm and my 40 ohm and I put them together. So of course what I have to do since these are in parallel is I have to use the uh, reciprocal rule. So I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to do 1 divided by 10 plus 1 divided by 40. I'm going to reciprocate that and I get 8. Okay, And uh, that seems okay to me because 8 is smaller than 10. Right? And remember, whenever you use the reciprocal rule, the answer that you get should be smaller than the smallest resistance you had in parallel. All right, the next step we're going to do here is we're going to find, go on the hunt again for series connections uh, of resistors. Clearly, they're all in series now. You've got 5 and 8 and 17. So I simply add those up to get 30 ohms. Okay. And by the way, this 30 ohms is my total resistance for the circuit. Uh, sometimes it's called equivalent resistance, right? Um, but that that's like you've just reduced all that stuff that was up here into something that is pretty simple, which is nice. All right. So the first step is to reduce in complexity, to, to limit, to, to make smaller the complexity of this circuit which we did. And now we're going to go backwards and we're going to start filling in the details. All right. So step four, um, we want to apply Ohm's law to calculate the total current in the circuit. Now, what that means is that it means this current, the current that would be flowing here. So if we put an ammeter into the circuit right there, that's the total current. Okay. And so what we need to do is to just, first of all, start off by saying, well, that total current is going to be affected by my 36 volts and also the total resistance of all the resistors. But we just figured out what that was. So let's go back and use that. So my I total is going to be equal to my voltage divided by my resistance total. Okay. 
And so that's going to be 36 volts over 30 ohms. All right, 30. So I've got 36 divided by 30. That's 1.2 amps. Okay. And again, maybe what I'll do is draw this little picture. We've got the 30 ohms. And now you've got 1.2 amps going through it. Okay. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take it. We're going to go back a step. And we're going to look at what happens when we go here to step two, when we had these three resistors in series. So we had 5, 8, and 17. I'm going to sketch that again. It's pretty helpful to do. And the thing is, is that we know that the total current going through these resistors is 1.2 amps, right? So every single one of those resistors gets 1.2 amps. And so the way that you find the voltage drops, in other words, the voltages that get used on each resistor, is you simply multiply the current times the resistance using Ohm's law, right? So for this first example, for the five ohms, we would have a current of 1.2 amps times five ohms. That is six volts. The next one would be 1.2 amps times eight ohms. That's 9.6 volts. And the last one, again, will be 1.2 amps times 17 ohms. which is 20.4 volts. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the biggest resistance, right, the 17 uses the most volts, and the smallest resistance uses the least volts. Okay, so that's important. Uh, the other thing we should look at is let's see if energy is conserved. And of course, when we're talking about circuits, what we really mean is let's see if the voltages basically add up. Okay, so I'm gonna add six plus 9.6 plus 20.4 And I get, uh, and I get 30, oh, I see what I did. I get 36, right? 36.0 volts. Yeah, good. And so that 36 volts is good because that's actually the voltage that my battery gave me, right? And so that just means that I did the problem right. So if you ever add up the voltages and they don't add up, that means you made a mistake someplace. You want to go back and check. All right, we're almost done. Um, we're gonna have to break out this eight ohm resistor into its pieces parts. So uh, remember that eight ohms is really gonna be, what was it? 10 ohms and 40 ohms, right? And what we wanna do is we wanna find the current that goes through each branch. So what that means is that I've got the 10 ohm branch, which is gonna have current going through it. We'll call that I10. And then I have a 40 ohm branch, but it's gonna have less current going through it. We'll call that I40. Uh, the reason I know it has less current is because it's a bigger resistor, right? So how do I find current? Again, Ohm's law, current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. And to find the current through the 10 ohm resistor, I'm gonna take the voltage across the 10 and divide by the resistance of 10 ohms. And the same thing for the 40, I would take the voltage across the 40 and divide it by 40 ohms. And that's gonna give me my currents in amps. Now, I left those two things blank because I hope you're thinking about that. Um, we have to remember, well, what is the current? I'm sorry, what is the voltage across the eight ohm, right? So what's my voltage here? And remember, our voltage was 9.6 volts. And that voltage is applied equally across each of those resistors because that is the rule for resistors in parallel. So the first one's pretty easy here. I take 9.6 divided by 10, that would be 0.96 amps. And then the second one, let's see, I've got to divide 9.6 divided by 40. That's gonna be 0.24 
Okay. Now, um, I'm glad that my uh, my current through uh, the 10 ohms is, is much bigger. 0.96 amps is much bigger than 0.24 volts. That's good. In fact, it's four times greater. You could show yourself that. Uh, the other thing I'm happy about is that when I add these currents together, I'm going to get a total current of 1.2 amps. And that's actually pretty important because that shows that I did stuff right. Um, theoretically, it's showing that charge was conserved in the circuit because when I had some charge going up through the 10 resistor, and I had other charge going down through the 40, but uh, they have to add up, right? So I'd better be getting the 1.2 amps for that. And then uh, it says, keep repeating these steps until you have solved for the voltage drop across each resistor and the current through each one. So let's see what we have left here. So we had, up at the beginning, we had five ohms. Okay, we had, We had uh, 10 ohms here, we had 40 here, and then finally we had 17 ohms here, right? Okay, so um, what we haven't done is we haven't figured out, I think the voltage drops across the 5 and the 17. Okay, so we know that this thing gets 1.2 amps, we know that this thing gets 1.2 amps, because they're, they have to. And so to find the voltages across those, we do 1.2 times 5. And um, I guess we did do this already, didn't we? And then we had this voltage is 1.2 times 17. Yeah, we did do that. Okay. So this one was going to be 6 volts. Uh, the other one was 20.4 volts. Right? And then I, in terms of like the, the 10 ohm and the 40 ohm, um, we already figured out here that you've got like 0.96 amps, you've got 0.24 amps, and then both of these guys get the same voltage of 9.6 volts. A little bit squished there with the writing. Um, but that's pretty much everything that you can know about the circuit, okay? So I think that with, with doing problems like this, the, the strategy is important. Um, the strategy is, first of all, to take the complex circuit and start by simplifying it into a single resistor circuit. And I would say every time you make a simplification, you should draw, resketch it, okay? So you've got the pictures there. So that takes you down to getting an R total. And then after that, you can go and work your way back, and you can start with the R total, and you can start figuring things out by using the series and parallel rules for circuits. And that should bring you back finally, to your original circuit. So good luck on trying these out, and remember as you do your own uh, to try to check your results with FET because that's a pretty useful tool. Good luck.